Welcome to our lockdown lookup series of video devotionals based on Ephesians 6, looking at the armor of God. Today I have my helmet that I use whenever I'm cycling and I've grown to appreciate the protection that the helmet brings. A few years back, a friend of mine was cycling down a hill and this hill had so many rocks in it and he had gained a lot of momentum going down this hill and he lost control of his bike and he ended up on the ground head first. And so we were all thankful that he had his helmet on and that that prevented, that prevented him from getting seriously injured. And this really brings us to our next piece of armor that we're going to be looking at and that is the helmet of salvation. So Ephesians 6 verse 17 says, Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit. Today our focus is going to be on the first part. So Pastor Justin beautifully put it yesterday that Paul seems to have switched gears on the armor that he's talking about. The next three um, pieces of armor, the one that he touched on yesterday, which was the shield, and the one I'm looking at today, the helmet, and tomorrow the sword, those deal with the, the armor that you have to take as you go into battle. Whereas the first three, these are the ones that we already have. These are fixed in us. Uh, and these we have them in Christ. And so today we're going to be looking at verse 17a. And really, I want us to just briefly unpack what it's what Paul is getting to here. So one, one of the things that comes out is the word salvation that we see here. So salvation, I just want to say, is a, is, a, is a gift that we receive from God. It is not something that we earn. It is something that is put on us. So what Paul is not saying in this passage is that we have to be saved over and over and over again. That is not what he's getting to. But Paul, however, does say we need to put this thing on. We need to take it on. And this implies sort of like this continual taking on. So what exactly is he talking about? I think the best commentary for that, it is for us to turn to 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 8. And so as I turn there, just to give you a bit of context into what's happening there, um, Paul has been handling um, questions that have come from this particular church and now he's addressing them on the issues concerning the day of the Lord. When is it going to come? When is it going to happen? And so this is what Paul says. And I'm going to read from verse 1 of chapter 5 of First Thessalonians. And the punchline is around verse 8. So just let me give you a bit of context. It says, Now, brothers and sisters, about times and dates, we do not need to write to you. For you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in the darkness so that this day shall surprise you like a thief. You are all children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then let us not be like others who are asleep. But let us be awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober. Putting on faith and love as a breastplate. And the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath. But to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. So there it is. You know, Paul, in dealing with this subject of the day of the Lord, he says we need to put on, we need to put on the hope of salvation as a helmet, as something that will protect us. And so, what exactly is he getting to? What is what is Paul really trying to unpack for us here? One, he's just saying, as children of God, we need to be admonished by this. He's admonishing us to live in light of our new identity in anticipating the day of the Lord. So the hope of salvation helps us in dealing with different things. One of the issues is dealing with here is the day of the Lord. How we should think about it? Well, we need to remain hopeful. We need to remember the hope that we have in Christ and what he has done for us. 
as we look ahead. So putting on the, hel the helmet of salvation, this is the victory that has been achieved for us. We receive it as an assurance that the decisive battle has been fought and won on our behalf. So one of the biggest battlegrounds, and I think this makes putting on the helmet of salvation very relevant for us, one of the biggest battlegrounds is the mind. We, have, we battle with perspective continually. And the battle can be lost he, right here in the mind. Sometimes we can win the battle in the mind. And so which is why we need to put on this helmet of salvation. One of the biggest uh, weapons that the devil uses or the schemes that he uses is just planting doubts in our minds. The devil plagues us with doubts on a daily basis. For instance, our daily, our current battle with COVID-19 has brought so many doubts, so much fear in our lives. But the reminder here again is, let's take on the helmet of salvation, which is taking on the hope of salvation and put that on as a helmet. That's a continual reminder. Remember, if you are a soldier, and you are dressed in your armor, but you don't have a helmet, you are exposed. You can be destroyed in the head. So the rest of your armor won't matter if you've been destroyed. So Paul, again, admonishing the church in, in the Roman church, he says, um, do not conform any longer to the patterns of the world, but be transformed in your mind. Be transformed by the renewal of your mind. So the battlefield is the mind at times, and the devil uses the mind to destroy us. So putting on the helmet of salvation, we are continually living in hope because of what our salvation means. One commentator puts this, this thing beautifully. She says, we need to refresh our memory every day by staying in scripture, praying during all circumstances, and remembering who has the ultimate victory. Christ has the ultimate victory. Satan wants to keep us trapped in the here and now. We see awful tragedies on the news. We encounter doubts and we worry. But in times like that, we have to renew our trust in the Lord. So we have to put on the hope that we have because of our salvation. We have to remember that if he, God, claims that he will save us and that we have put our trust in him, then that he will not abandon us. That is what we need to be remembering. So it's about perspective that we need to be having on a continual basis. And that is the encouragement for us today, that we need to put on this helmet of salvation. I want us to close just with a prayer. And my challenge to you is, Live in light of your salvation. Put on the hope of salvation. So let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, salvation comes through you alone. And I pray that you give us an assurance that we are your children and that, Lord, would you give us um, hope in times where there seems to be hopelessness. God, I pray that we would put on this piece of armor. We'll put on this hope that we have in you, Lord, in dealing with different things. And that, Lord, we'll be ready to stand when the scheming devil comes, whenever the assaults of the devil come, that we'll be ready to battle because, Lord, of the hope that we have in our salvation. Thank you, God, for Christ. Thank you for what he has done for us. Pray these things in your son's name. Amen.